let's take a look at a Doppler effect problem. So we're going to go all out on this one. It's a fairly complex problem. Usually not both things are moving when you have to do this and that makes the equation simpler to use because one of the terms drops out. But remember our equation says that the frequency of uh, that we hear at the, uh, as the observer is given by the frequency of the source times um, the velocity of the source, or the velocity of the wave, sorry, uh, the velocity of the wave, plus or minus the velocity of the observer divided by the velocity of the wave minus or plus the velocity of the source. And remember, the top, we use the top if they go towards each other, uh, top towards, and we use the bottom if they're moving away. Okay? All right. So now let's take a look at our scenario. Train moves towards you as you move towards the train, uh, and then of course you pass. We have a train going this way. Actually, I think we have you going this way. What's it say? A train, as you drive eastbound, a train drives. So you have you going this way and a train coming this way. You're not going to run into each other. You're paralleling each other. Uh, and so this is occurring. And then you end up over here. And so first you're moving together or towards each other, and then you're moving away from each other. So this isn't so bad. But since we do have those two cases, I am going to have this case move towards, and I'm going to have this case move away. All right, so when we're moving towards each other, uh, we know that the frequency that we detect is given right here. You hear the frequency change from 564, so the initial frequency that we have is 564. The frequency of the source, we don't really know. Okay? The velocity of the source, we also don't know. However, uh, you are moving at 30 meters per second, so the velocity of the observer is 30, and sound moves at 343 meters per second, or we're assuming it does. So that means the frequency we hear, 564, is given by the frequency of the source, which we don't know, so F, or FS, times the velocity of sound, 343. Now we're moving towards each other, so I'm going to go ahead and add on plus 30, divided by this 343 moving towards each other so subtract the velocity of the source which I don't know okay? so I have two unknowns one equation I'm stuck so now we're gonna jump over to the away side okay? and some things have changed now we're on the other side and the frequency has decreased to 524 so we hear a frequency of 524 Hertz our velocity has not changed. The velocity of the observer is still 30 meters per second. We're assuming the velocity of the source has not changed. It's still Vs, but we don't know it. We still don't know that frequency, F, it's unknown. But sound still moves at 343 meters per second. So same equation, but different numbers. 524 equals, and now we have the away side. So frequency of the source times the 343 minus 30 over 343 plus the velocity of the source. So now all we have to do is take one of these equations, solve it, and sub it into the other equation. So I'm going to start over here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to solve that for the frequency of the source. So what I get is FS is equal to 524 divided by this giant fraction, which I can simplify a little bit. That's 313 over 343 plus Vs. Now, I can invert this fraction and multiply it if I want to make it a little bit simpler, but for now, I'm going to leave it like this, and I'm going to sub it all the way over into this equation because Fs is Fs. That hasn't changed. So now I have 564 equals 524 over 313 over 343 plus Vs times 343 plus 30, which I guess I can simplify to 373 over 343 minus Vs. Now this is the part where you have to be careful with your fractions. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start simplifying a few things. So this is 524 divided by this fraction, which means invert and multiply. So 564 is equal to 524 over 313 times 343 plus Vs times, this is 373, over 343 
minus Vs. Okay. If these were the same sign, they would cancel and we would have an issue. But they're not. We were paying attention, so we're good. So now we actually can get rid of a whole bunch of this junk. Okay, so 524 divided by 313 is a number. 524 divided by 313, uh, it's 1.67. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to divide that over. So now I have uh, 564 divided by that 1.67, and that gets me. Uh, 336.9. 336.9. So I did this simplification, divided it over, and now I have 343 plus Vs times 373 over 343 minus Vs. Okay, so now it's just algebra. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by this 373. Divide by 373, and I get uh, 0.9. 0, 0.03 is equal to 343 plus Vs times 1 over 343 minus Vs. So now I'm just going to multiply this quantity over, and so I have 0 0.903 times 343 minus Vs equals 343 plus Vs. And so now I can distribute that through. So times 343 equals 309.79 minus 0 0.903 Vs equals 343 plus Vs. So I can add that over and subtract that. So 309.79 minus 343 is negative 33.2. Uh, is equal to, and now I'm going to have 1 plus 9.03 or 1.903 Vs and divide that negative 33.2 divided by 1.903 and I see negative 17 uh, 0.447 meters per second. Now why negative 17? Well because all the way at the beginning essentially we had uh, this moving in the opposite direction of our 30 meters per second. Okay, So that tells me the velocity of the train is 17.44 or 17.45 I guess meters per second uh, and it is traveling in a westward or negative direction there. So we're good with that. Okay? If you did this with the other equation where you just always set up the velocity of the wave to be positive that introduces a little bit of some sign issues so I do kinda like this equation um, although if you're paying close attention to your signs the other one does work